You know when you watch an animated movie at the cinema, they often have like a little mini film on before the main film. Main review is coming. This is the mini review. This is the Brawl MD2800 Pro Professional Motorcycle Hairdryer. I was on Amazon, I was browsing, I think I was looking for multivitamins, and suddenly I found this. There are lots of motorcycle hair dryers available, tons of them on there. The thing that sold me on this, this is the Pro Professional. That's basically the professional professional version. If those other ones go up to 10. These go to 11. Now that is not to say I did not buy this without concerns. I had buying remorse with this. I was literally typing in my details to Amazon thinking, what are you doing? But I needn't worry, this thing is an absolute beast. I love it. I cleaned the CRF at the weekend, blasted it with this, got all the water off of it, it's bone dry. No drips on the floor, no water left on the bike to rust things. I want to use it all the time. I was even tempted to mop the floor of the garage just to dry it with this. Uh, I didn't because that would involve mopping the floor. Love it, highly recommended. So, when I got back into motorcycling a couple of years ago, I started my motorcycling comeback by going to Namibia for three weeks and riding around the desert. The entirety of my preparation for that was just to watch Long Way Around and Long Way Down with Charlie Borman and Obi-Wan Kenobi. That was all I did. So that was all I knew. I simply went and bought what I saw those guys were wearing, big, chunky adventure clothing stuff. This is the jacket that I wore. I have matching trousers. This is by Revit. And it is very, very good. It's comfortable to wear. It's nice and loose fitting. It's got built-in armor, layers for waterproof and heat. Looks the part, lots of storage. It's very good. However, as my three weeks in Namibia wore on, I started to have some minor concerns. It's got zips all over the place that you undo and it lets the air pass through the jacket. The minute you stop, you're wearing a really hot jacket in the desert. Not possible to describe how hot it is. Now, when I got back to the UK, I decided to do more riding over here. Now, in the UK, obviously, it's not as warm as it is in Africa, but you're riding much slower often. The trails over here are much narrower and more technical. You're often riding through woods and fields and ruts. Doing any of that in this was hot work. I also started to have concerns about the body armour. Because I was falling off more regularly, I was finding that I was testing it more regularly. Things like the elbow pads and the shoulder pads will sit roughly where that joint is, but only roughly. And my worry was that if the elbow pad shifts around and I fall off, is it actually protecting me as well as it could? And other things that have been really useful in Africa, like all the storage and the pockets for keeping passport and wallet and stuff in, if I'm gonna be falling off more regularly, the last thing I want is stuff stuffed into my pockets digging into me, so I didn't use those. And lastly, the waterproof liner on this, Gore-Tex, goes underneath the jacket. You zip it underneath. I've never used it, ever. What am I supposed to do? Take the jacket off in the rain, stick the waterproof layer on, put the jacket back on top. Now the jacket's getting saturated with water, but I'm dry, so that's okay, I suppose. But then the rain stops, so what? I can't take the layer off because the jacket's saturated and wet. Is it not easier just to have a waterproof shell that you put over the top of the whole thing? So this is very, very good, but it became not appropriate for what I was using it for. If I was doing more of a sort of touring style riding, absolutely fine. And to be fair, most people on big adventure bikes are doing that sort of riding. This is great. They can stick their money in their pockets for their cappuccino. They can zip up all their vents when it gets cold and they've left their heated underpants in the Hilton that they camped in the night before. It works very, very well for that, but not for me. So, I started looking at what I could wear instead, and there did seem to be a really big gap between that sort of bulky adventure style riding gear and then just motocross gear. I didn't want to wear motocross gear. It's nice and it's bright and it's colourful and it looks like you're off to the X Games. That's not for me at all. So then I stumbled on the adventure spec gear. Now I'd use adventure spec for all sorts of bits and pieces on the bike. Splash plate on Jen's bike is from adventure spec. They helped us out with the tyres, gave us loads of advice on that. 
They even qualified for a sticker on the tool chest. So I looked on their website and I found they were selling their own branded gear. The choice was really limited, which was very good. Kept it nice and simple. They had a Atacama race pant. That was the only pant they did, so that was an easy choice. They then had a couple of jackets. They had the matching jacket, the Atacama race jacket, and they had the linesman jacket. I like the idea of the linesman jacket. It's supposed to evoke ideas of using the Trans-European Trail. That's where they got the name from. But it's green, so it doesn't match the trousers, which was important to me. And it's green, like a farmer. So, this is it. 249 for the jacket, 229 for the trousers. You get these and then you layer up. And I love the idea of layering up. When I first got the adventure jacket, I thought that was the way to go. Built in armor, built in waterproof layer. No, I now much prefer wearing separate layers that I can pick and choose depending upon where I'm riding, what the temperature is. I am completely a layering convert. I wear compression shorts and compression t-shirt underneath everything for just for comfort and sweat wicking, wherever that is. On top of that, I then wear my armor. So I have knee pads that I wear and I wear my body armor, which I love. Um, the body armor is always exactly where it's supposed to be because it's tight fitting, doesn't go anywhere, really comfortable, can't even tell I'm wearing it. This stuff from Lee is just superb. On top of that, I then wear whatever I need, depending upon the weather. I just went to our local decathlon sports store and bought cheap thermal gear from their skiing section that all go on top of the armor, but underneath the jacket, keep me warm. But if I get too hot, I can just take them off and pack them in the bag. So the good points, it is so lightweight. I just weighed it and it is about a kilogram less than the other jacket. A kilogram less is a lot. And it's just much less bulky. When I'm riding in the UK, because it's much more technical, I like to be able to move around. And in this, it just doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything that's restricting me at all. If I need to move around on the bike, if I'm ducking under trees or whatever, or picking the bike up, working on the bike, this doesn't get in the way at all. It's really lightweight. It's not tight fitting, but it's fitting enough that it's not obstructive when I'm wearing it. Size wise, I'm six foot six, 220 pounds, 34 waist, 44 chest, and it fits me absolutely perfectly. There's just enough room underneath to fit my armor and a thermal layer. I bought the XL size jacket and the 36 trouser. The 36 trouser is a little bit loose, but it has a belt, so no problems at all. I needed it for the length in the leg. At six foot six, it could always be a bit longer, but it's an in the boot style, so it doesn't really make much difference. It's worth noting actually, the in the boot style is very impractical. Everything goes down inside the boot, mud, water, small animals end up in there. It's much more sensible when you're trail riding to have an outside of the boot pant, but it doesn't look anywhere near as cool, so in the boot for me. The pants themselves have decent sized pockets. They've got decent sized vents down the front of the leg, Let's the air pass through if you need that. Um, I don't find I do very often. I rode in Africa with these recently and it was hot and I didn't bother opening the vents in them at all. In fact, I didn't even realize they had vents until I was packing them up and coming home. Um, they simply didn't need it. They're nice and lightweight. They seem to be really hard wearing so far. Uh, the only damage that I've inflicted upon them is where the bike fell on me and the exhaust burnt a hole through the material. It's not really Adventure Specs fault that I put a burning hot exhaust on the leg, so I can't blame them for that. The knees in particular, I thought would wear through. Because I'm tall, I don't have to bend over, so if I'm doing anything on the bike, I'll just kneel down in the dirt. I've changed tyres, worked on the bikes, fixed them, picked them up, all kneeling, crawling around in the earth and the knees are still absolutely perfect. No problems with them whatsoever. There's loads of articulation because they've got these little stretchy panels in them. And ultimately they feel more substantial than most of the motocross trousers I've seen, but they aren't anywhere near as bulky as the adventure stuff that I was wearing. Plenty of room in the knees for my knee pads. In fact, I could even go to knee braces and still fit these over the top of them. So, like the pants, loads. And the jacket's great too. Um, I bought the one that has a smaller neck collar so it allows me to wear my neck brace more comfortably. They do do a version that is not so compatible with a neck brace. You can get that if it's not something you wear. I never go out without my neck brace on. 
It's got great little elasticated cuffs, which just work perfectly with my gloves. They stop wind whistling up the arms. Again, just like the jacket, the material appears to be decent and hard wearing. On their website, they've got all the specs of the type of material they use in it. Uh, I haven't tested it by sliding down the road, but I have a lot more confidence in this than some of the lighter weight stuff I've seen. Pockets wise, it's got two pockets on the chest. It's where my iPhone lives. It's the one thing that I'm happy to carry on me. If I find myself lying in a ditch, I want to be able to call for help from there rather than need to crawl back to the bike first. It's also got a really long back. This comes down really low. One of the things I hate when I'm riding is the feeling of there being a gap between the trousers and the jacket. I don't like to lean forward and feel airflow around there. It's also got big pockets on the back. Never used them. Colour wise it's great. It's got a little bit of a green tinge, having complained about green earlier, but it's predominantly a grey look. Um, and I like it a lot. It's basically very plain. It goes with any colour bike. You stick a cool coloured lid with it if you want to be a bit funky and you're good to go. I like it a lot. It matches the trousers but it doesn't look too matchy matchy. Ventilation. The ventilation on this is incredibly good but it's important to understand how good it is um, because it might not always be appropriate for you. When I first put this on and went for a ride on a hot day it was amazing. It was like I wasn't wearing anything at all. The air just flows straight through. This is almost like a mesh material. In fact You can see straight through it. And I bought this just before going to the Pyrenees and I expected the Pyrenees to be beautifully hot. It was June we were going, we were expecting it to be lovely weather. And day one of the Pyrenees looked like this, a little bit chilly. Took me about four hours to dig the bike out of that snowdrift. We didn't have to ride for a good couple of hours after that. But the jacket was absolutely fine. Uh, I had no problems with it at all. When I was working on digging the bike out and getting really hot, the jacket wasn't too hot and it allowed me to work on the bike with no problems. Afterwards, when I was riding to the campsite, I simply stuck on my thermal air underneath. It took me 30 seconds to put that on under the jacket. There was no problem with it at all. And the following day when the sun came out properly and I got really hot wearing it, I simply rolled it up really small and stuck it in a bag on the back of the bike. On the odd occasion that it rained over there and we got wet, the thing dries out in seconds. Despite me riding in some really harsh conditions, I had no problems with it at all. And since then I've ridden all over the place with this. I'd say I was in Africa recently and I wore it there. The ventilation of course was excellent, but there were times we rode either in the very early morning and it was cold, down by the coast was, was chilly, we rode up in the mountains and that was cold up there. Again, stuck a thermal air on, and on the odd occasion where I had to get off and work on the bike and do stuff with the bike, again, much less restrictive, just felt really comfortable using it. So, like it an awful lot. Problems with it. Well, there's, there's three problems. Firstly, these rubber logos that they've put on. These things just fall off. It's going already on the other side. In fact, it doesn't zip to the jacket. And I'd either like it to zip to the jacket or know why from Adventure Spec it doesn't zip to the jacket. Maybe it's from when I used to ride race bikes and wear full leathers all the time. I like the idea of there being no gap between pant and jacket. I don't like the idea that these two pieces of material can just come apart and leave my back exposed. And lastly, they need to get on and make a waterproof shell. Adventure Spec have been saying for a while they're gonna do one. It means I'm gonna to have to buy from a different brand, which is fine, but it'd be nice to continue using Adventure Spec stuff. So, waterproof layer, guys. Oh, and lastly, on behalf of Jenna, they need to make women's sizes and on behalf of the very few women that I have spoken to about motorcycle clothing, uh, the one thing they all say, don't make it pink. Other than that, I really like it. I paid full price for it. I don't know the guys at Adventure Spec. Really good stuff though. Hope you found it useful. If there's more things that I use that you're interested in knowing about, let me know, whether it's bikes, e-bikes, outdoor tech stuff, whatever. Happy to talk about it. That's it, smash that subscribe button if you are young and cool. Just click on it sensibly if you're old enough to have got the Spinal Tap gag. It's Bins Day.